Swimmers, take your mark. everybody and welcome to On Deck with Florida Swim Network. I am Joe Auer alongside my buddy Dave Van Buskirk and another big guy Sid Cassidy always keeps us in line as usual. Great to be here Joe. It's hard to believe this is our 12th week already. 12th week last right. time in the Long Center. That's right but you know what guys more importantly this is our pre-district show. We have finished off it's all the dual meets. It's so wild. We have finished up the, the counties and you know everything like that. Now, guess what? It, get, it gets really exciting here, does. Dave, because you have to commit your swimmers by the end of this week. Or even, you know, you, you look at the meet entry date. Yep. I, I know Monday is ours. And, and maybe you want to swim one person in three relays in an individual, or maybe you're going to pick between two of their best events, but you have three girls that do the breaststrokes. you got to pull one girl out. And there's a lot of strategy that a coach is faced with this week. Right. And it's, it's important. What's the mindset, though, especially when you have somebody that's got all kinds of talent? Are you more focusing a little bit towards the relays, or are you focusing more towards the individual events? Well, you know, if, if you remember all the way back when we had John Sokovich yep. on, and he, he talked about they were looking at national points in the mythical. Right. And they were trying to get their relays to score as many points as possible to beat the Germantown Academies and whoever mm -hmm. else is out there. For us... You know, we're looking at trying to get the best experience to score the highest team we can at States. And I think every coach does things a little Correct. bit differently. Uh, but I have had some great kids through the years that have made a sacrifice, said, Coach, maybe it's not my best event, but if the team needs me there, and that's the kind of swimmer that not only is successful on this level, but you see 5, 10, 15 years later, they come back, and they're a team player in life. Correct. And that's really what it's all about. Okay. So you're getting close. You're getting close. People are starting <laughs> starting to rest big time. Yeah. yeah. Some of your guys that are you're gonna try to eat them in to to the finals, and so it's sure, sure. You're gonna have to well, rest. Some a of your bit. kids you have to rest. You have to shave some. I mean, there may be some kids people have to shave at districts. Certainly at regions, a lot of people shave. You know, you have to be really good to know that you're going to state, and you have to keep them hanging on if so, they keep. There we go. It. So that's a great question. What do you do? coach when you have somebody that is borderline that you know is going to make states but you know what it's hard because you got to get out of regionals if they're borderline to get to the meet yep. Dave I shave them okay. I'd rather shave twice than leave them home on the bench okay uh, I got a guy like Brody Heck no, he'll be fine yeah you know, he's a senior correct he's a two-time champion last is year is he going 19 by the way <laughs> we'll see soon <laughs> we will see soon won't we Joe that would be you pretty never quick. know 43 okay. it's going to be a great race certainly Cody Klein in, in our own region down there and and there's a lot of great swimmers I I think the 4A is going to be every division is going to be it is going to be tough I can't you're wait right. to see the mythical meet results again oh, which you can know. find only here at Florida Swim Network oh my gosh you know what I almost forgot guys you know not only during pre-districts but during regionals uh, if you have any meet results, please do us a favor. We've got the ticker going around, the swim ticker going across the bottom of the screen. We also are throwing up tweets constantly. Of course. Don't of course. forget, though, to send that information to info at FloridaSwimNetwork.com. We will run everything we can. Also, please continue to keep checking the website. We're constantly keeping it updated. Have you guys ever wondered when to contact a college? I don't know when. That's a great question. Caitlin Freeling is going to let us know. Let's go see Caitlin. Hey guys, Caitlin Freeling here to talk to you about how to start contacting the schools you're interested in. The number one thing you need to do, this is the most important, you need to register at the NCAA Clearinghouse. This will make you eligible to become an NCAA athlete. Talk to your parents. They can help you do it. Mine did. Um, there's ways you can look up online how to do it. It's fairly simple. So just talk to your parents and have them help you with that. Then you can go ahead and shoot the coaches an email. Say, hey, give them your name, give them your times. That way that they can see if you're a good fit for their program. And this really is the first step that you can take to becoming an NCAA athlete. In teaching age group swimmers great breaststroke turns, we want to look at just a couple very key points which keeps things very simple in the teaching and gives swimmers something very easy to think about. 
The first point would be head position. As they come through the turn, you'll notice that Sarah does lift her head a little bit, but for the most part stays very connected with the surface of the water. You can see back here the water is already being disrupted by the head going back, so she is very, very low through the course of the turn. What we find is that so many swimmers will lift their body up rather than staying low and in contact with the surface of the water as they go around for their turns. So the first point is staying low. The second is how you draw your feet to the wall. Sarah very quickly points her toes and drags them right up behind her body. She gets her entire body into a tight tuck, but it really starts with the toes and the cleanliness of that line and how the entire unit rolls and spins very quickly because the feet are so clean as they come forward. So keeping the feet very clean as they come around on the turn. And the third point would be using the wall for leverage or using the wall to push off to initiate a faster spin. So as Sarah comes into the wall, you'll see that her arm collapses very close to the wall. The elbow stays very close to the wall, which gives her the ability to push back on the upper part of the torso while the legs spin in and around. So using the arm to push back to allow you to get through the rotation faster. So those three very quick and easy points. Short course yards. Short course yards refers to a 25 yard pool and is swum in high school and college and typically you swim sideways on an Olympic sized pool rather than lengthwise. There's people who care where I'm going and good friends who welcome me home. So get up for tank of freedom, try the American. And with a full tank of freedom, find your own highway, we'll take you wherever you go. Take you wherever you go. Hey everybody, Dr. Brad Burkhardt from Orlando Orthopedics. I'm here today to talk to you about a particular structure in the shoulder that's called the labrum, okay? Your rotator cuff is wrapped around the ball, but if you get deep inside the shoulder and you look at the glenoid, which is the socket, it's a very flat surface. It's kind of like a dinner plate. And if you think of your dinner plate so that your peas don't roll off the dinner plate, there's a lip on the dinner plate. That's sort of what the labrum's like. It kind of helps keep the ball centered in the socket, and it's an attachment point for a number of different structures. There's a labrum on the top, there's a labrum in the front, and on the bottom, and in the back. And each of those can be torn, and if they're torn, they're treated in slightly different ways. Labral tears hurt, and the majority of people who have a labral tear will have pain, which we can almost always get better without surgery. Sometimes, if you've had something like a shoulder dislocation, that causes a labral tear that needs to be fixed. So if your shoulder's hurting and it's feeling like it's deep down in your shoulder, then sometimes we have to do the normal anti-inflammatory medications, rest, medications, rest, modifying some of your activities. But the only way to really see a labrum is to do an MRI. When you get that MRI, then we can talk to you about the specific treatment options for your injury. Welcome back to On Deck with Florida Swim Network. We're super excited to have Berkeley Prep's Kevin Rose pop up. Great powerhouse in Central Florida. Let's go ahead and talk about your boys. How are they doing this year? Uh, we're looking to rebuild, not necessarily completely rebuild. We have a lot of good quality kids and we're just looking to fill spaces um, like the third or fourth swimmer in each event. Well, so, Ke Kevin, I got I to gotta take exception because just a couple weeks ago we were up here for the Tampa Bay Classic mm -hmm. and your boys are pretty doggone good. And Berkeley's always had a really good team. How many regions have you won in a row? Uh, we won six regions in a row, and we're <laughs> going for our seventh region this year. 
Oh. And we're on our sixth dis- district championship in a row. Yeah, and so. he just reloads, Joe. He's, I mean, I'm telling you, he loads. All right, so, so tell me a couple of the guys that you think are really going to step it up this year. And, and That's right. We're going into districts now. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, we, we definitely we have um, Bradley Mitchell, who will be a senior. Wade Patterson, who's a senior at Scored at States last year. We have Tommy Kiss at Scored at States last year. Um, we have Jesse Potts, who was in sixth in overall diving last year. We have a newcomer, Nathan Stovern that transferred into Berkeley. That it's only his second competitive year in swimming. He started high school swimming two years ago and wow. nearly drowned on 100 freestyle. This summer, he was only two tenths off his junior national cut. So Nathan, <laughs> we have a lot of improvement. <laughs> what the heck? That's not drowning <laughs> anymore. No, that's not. There. That's it's, not. If people I, behind you may be drowning. And, and, but and you've got some very good girls too. Yeah, <laughs> we have we have a lot of depth in our girls. We have um they're. We have about 14 girls and they're all club swimmers, so they swim year round. We don't have any really, really great swimmers that really step up, but putting them all together and working as a team, we, we do really well. We have four really, really good divers that will finish, they'll all four will finish in the top eight at states. So, so that'll bad. be a, bo- a big boost to us. So Kevin, we've <laughs> talked about the boys and the girls for the individuals. Let's talk about the relay teams. Um, our relay on our girls side is, again, we're gonna have to work together as a team um, and get all, all three relays, you know, to the meet, but we have enough there that we should finish up in the close to ninth, eighth in that okay. area, and we'll score a lot of points and do real well. We finished tenth last year. Our goal is to finish in the top seven this year. Okay. So I think that we'll be so able let's, to do that. So let's flip the coin now and go to the boys. Boys, we ended up, last year we ended up uh, fourth by five points. Wow. We got beat by Cardinal Mooney in Lake Highland. And uh, oh, we were fifth, by the way. And I'm saying, <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I'm looking, and I think we're shaping up to have some good relay battles yeah. in Stewart. And I'm looking forward to this because your guys, you know, at the beginning of the season, you might not have known what you had, but now you're looking pretty good on those relays. Yeah, we, I mean, we definitely have improved throughout the year. And it just goes back to we have a good tradition of swimming at Berkeley Prep, and the boys really take take that to heart Mm -hmm. and um, we have a wall at our pool that basically lists all the accomplishments that has ever happened at Berkeley Prep and a lot of the kids that start there in first grade or second grade that come out and swim that swim all the way up through high school their whole goal is to get on that wall. So So, a lot of tradition there I mean how how do you guys prepare for that do you tell your your seniors or your captains to you know go take all the kids in a room and talk about how great we've been the last 10 years? Well it's kind of the kids, the, the kids start with 1A swimming. You can start in sixth grade. Right. So yeah. we have a, a strong middle division kids okay. program that has 28 kids on it. That's a good building, yeah. building bus. And overall, in the whole program for the high school team, we have 81 kids, 17 divers, about 27 middle division kids, and the rest of the kids are upper division. So some of those kids make the varsity team in sixth grade and swim all six years. Wow. So carrying on a tradition it just kind mm-hmm. of grows on them and they understand what 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 they need to do we've won six straight regions and nobody wants to be the one to lose i hear straight. that <laughs> I, I can attest we're we're gearing up we hope we can give you a race in stewart but yep. first we'll get through the region meet yep. and um you know you guys have who's your toughest competition going to be this year in our region um we always have to look out for tampa prep Mm-hmm. Uh, community school down in Naples. They have a lot. They have a lot yeah. of quality, good, a lot of good kids. Bishop Faro, um, and that's basically our real tight. Cardinal Mooney has really four really outstanding boys. I mean, right. they went to the state meet with like five kids last year mm-hmm. and ended up second. <laughs> right. When you win every event, you score a lot of points. Sure, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. So um, those are our main competitions. But we also we look outside the area a lot. When we go, we went to dual meets. We just swam a meet against Bowles, and I mean, yeah, we got killed, but <laughs> it gives our it gives our ki- it gives our kids an opportunity to right. see what's actually out there. Absolutely, and and that's good. You know, I, I know that Joe. When when we look at our state meet in one A, we we love to go against the best, and and having teams like Berkeley, and we don't shy away from the Pinecrest and the Bowles and the yep. Trinity you Prep. Know, it's a huge it's a huge strategy thing you're playing right. all the time. Like, okay, I need these four guys on this relay. Oh no, I need to move, move these two. I mean, it's a huge strategy play for you guys. Oh, there's a lot of strategy. I mean, uh, starting the season, I believe me, it takes me about a week, week <laughs> and a half to try wow. to come together with a lineup. When you're trying to look four deep in an event, and then you're also looking into the future, 
you you got to see what kids are projected to be so too. Can you can you share with me that strategy? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see who's swimming what relay is what I want. Yeah. I bet you do. But we'll all find that out in a couple weeks. Now, we? we will. So Dave, I know that you uh, sat down with a legendary coach a while back. I did. I had a chance to sit down with Dick Jokums, and this is what he had to say. Congratulations on your recent uh, ISCA Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Let's rewind. How in the world did you get involved in swimming? I had uh, very little choice. I was a... Uh, uh, athletics was my only means to have anything working for me. When I was young, I had mirror vision. I was in the slow groups school and... Uh, I liked basketball and I liked football and all I did, I also had a mouth on me and got nothing but trouble <laughs> and fights and so my mother put me in swimming. Put me at the Berkeley YMCA and they didn't let her in the building and I never got the pool, I found the basketball court. And next thing I knew I was swimming for a woman at the Berkeley Women's City Club named Laura Bell Bookstaver and that's what happened to me. So Dick, is there any particular person that you look back over your career and say, hey, thank you very much for getting me involved, or anybody that really served as a mentor to you? My mother. My mother's the one that decided I was going to be a swimmer and not a football player or a basketball player. I could dunk a ball at 14, so I'm telling you that uh, swimming was not my sport. You know, you can drown out there, you can die. It wasn't my idea of fun, but my mother decided that was going to be my sport. How has swimming changed since when you were taking part in it to where we are today? Well, up until the 1950s, nobody trained. They just went mm -hmm. about 3,000 yards, and that's a lot of swimming for for most people, but 3,000 yards is nothing with what we could do today. Even sprinters go five to 6,000 a day, basically, today. So what's happened is more time, more involvement. It's become more specialized. Uh, techniques have not really changed, but... Uh, the way you train and the speed of the workouts has changed drastically. Is it the swimmer that makes the suit or is it the suit that makes the swimmer? Well, it's uh, the former. It's, uh, the suit doesn't do as quite except cover body parts. Uh, they've done other things with the, with the suits uh, a few uh, years ago that were basically illegal. You throw those, those rubberized suits they were mm -hmm. producing and they would never sink, so they were providing buoyancy. But no, it's still a man has to a man or female has to swim, and that's them swimming, <laughs> and that's the, them feeling the pain because swimming is is not an easy sport. You you heard out there, mm -hmm. you get lactate levels. Uh, the only people that are higher the, in the sprint of the rowing is that they go up to 40 times basal metabolism. Swimmers are at 10 to 12, 12 basal metabolism mm -hmm. times basal metabolism. That's high. That, the only thing that happens is you build lactic acid, and lactic acid is what pain is. Well, Dick, thank you very much, and good congratulations on your Hall of Fame. Well, thank you very much. Hi, Sid. ¿Qué debería comer un atleta antes de una competencia? Enrique, thanks for asking that question in Spanish. And of course, nutrition is a very important part of any athlete's role in success. The night before me, I always went with the pasta. Some athletes uh, might like a little bit of protein with that. I know my own son was a big chicken parm guy. As long as we found an Italian place, we could get that, he was happy. And it is important that they don't try anything new, that they get something they're comfortable with. It doesn't have to be pasta, but if it has complex carbohydrate, fruit's always good, um, but you don't want to overeat and you don't want to think, okay, I need the big this steak. You know, I mean, you need a balanced meal plan throughout the week and the night before. In these races, you don't need to super carbo load. Just, you know, let them eat healthy and let them eat comfortably. Need your swim fix? Have you been to our website, floridaswimnetwork.com yet? We have many pages with all the water sports for you to look at. You can also send us results, photos, and stories to info at floridaswimnetwork.com. Remember the feeling? New goggles, a new cap. When you support the USA Swimming Foundation, you provide a gift that won't fit in a box. A gift that helps young athletes fuel their competitive dreams. 
one that provides potential life-saving swim lessons to children. Your gift, it really is impossible to wrap. The USA Swimming Foundation, saving lives and building champions. Welcome back to On Deck with Florida Swim Network. You know, we didn't really dive in Get it? Dive in <laughs> with the girls at Berkeley Prep. So tell us a little bit about the girls. Uh, the girls at Berkeley Prep, we've been continuing to build over the last few mm -hmm. years. Uh, we've won two straight regions in a row. Awesome. We've won two straight regions without winning a district. So that should give you a little bit of idea how much, how deep our team really is. And we continue to add depth to our squad and we look for big things this year. And, and who are your captains this year for the girls? Um, Megan Blatz, Stephanie Punzak. Couple uh, of good seniors Myers. right there. Oh man, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and then you got the great divers we did talk about, and you know we're talking about some great swimmers from mm. this central Florida area, and this is our last week here at the beautiful Long yep. Center. That's right. And last week Nicole Hazlett gave us some Olympic trivia. Yes. I kind of wanted to follow up on that, Joe. Let's do it. I you. have Let's an go. Olympic question. Okay. True okay. or false? There we go. And here's Kevin. our paddles. Okay. Let's go to 1980 Moscow Olympics. Duncan Goodhue from Great Britain, won the 100 meter breaststroke. True or false? When they raised the Union Jack, they played his national anthem, God Save the Queen. Uh, I would say definitely false. Wait, oh. you're going over there. <laughs> definitely <laughs> false, and the reason was because Great Britain didn't really support us in that boycott. That's when President Carter did his whole Hey, politics is, you know, sports, and uh, I don't want to get into all that. Oh, yeah, don't get, don't no, get Sid no. started. No, let's not but go there. But <laughs> what happened with Duncan, he was a teammate of mine at NC State. They brought him back to NC State, and at the halftime of the Carolina-NC State football game, they had a podium in the middle of the field. They put him on the top. They put his gold medal on him and played God Save the Queen. 55,000 people cried, including wow. Duncan. Wow. <laughs> it was awesome. Very cool. All right, so real quick, what year – actually, let, let me rephrase this – uh, in 1960, the butterfly as we know it was swam in the Olympics. True or false? For the first time? First time. First as time. we know it. As we know it. As we know it. With the True. overarm recovery. True okay. or false? Okay. okay. Go back to Jack Nelson. So. Mm, True or, or false? True or false? Got to pick one up. False. Absolutely correct again. It was 1956, and you're right. It was Jack Nelson. God rest his soul. Yes. Great Florida coach that he was. And in 1956, I know this because my former mentor, Bob Matson was a 200 breaststroker. And they only took one. Dick Fadgen was second, Bob Matson third. Neither one of them got to go because the Olympic Committee had only budgeted for three places. Then they split. They had fly-in breaststroke. So they took two flyers and a breaststroker, and that's what they decided to do. So do they think 200 fly, you think, was... Uh, just this huge distance to do. I mean, did, was only a few people doing it? Because I know today, not many people like to do right. the two fly. Right. No, no, I think it was more that, you know, it was just evolving as a stroke. It, we still had the 150 IM back then. Oh I mean, gosh. it only became a 200 IM when people started doing overarm oh. recovery with the breaststroke kick. When I started swimming, Joe, it was legal to do breaststroke kick with butterfly. It was 67 or 8 when FINA changed that. Okay, I got another one. All right, so they used to time races in the thousands of a second. Right. You with me on that? Yep. We're clear. They changed it. All right. They changed that in 1972. True or false? I will say false. Oh, oh you're two for it? three. Not too bad. <laughs> not bad. They, not they bad. did hey. change it in 72, but not before the Olympic Games. As a matter of fact, that's when Tim McKee and Hans Foschnott from Sweden tied you in the 400 You say that so IM. well. Well, <laughs> I, I, I've been to Sweden. Okay. I understand. But, but, but they tied to the 100th. And I remember Jim McKay. I was a young guy watching on TV, ABC, <laughs> Wild World of Sports. And here it is. So they tied, and we're all watching. And I knew Tim McKee is a local guy because I was from the Philly area. And it's like seven minutes. They're showing both their faces, black and white TV. And then finally they said, the winner by four one thousandths of a second. And uh, that's the crazy. ironic thing was Tim McKee came back, got another silver four years later. Unbelievable swimmer. One of the best ever. How in the world? I mean, who did it look, who did it look like? Fina changed it the next day. The next day. The next day. Well, I know we're going to a swimmer highlight now. And this week's swimmer highlight, here's who they are.
So guys, this is kind of sad. This is our last time in the Long Center. That's right. I mean, it's such, been such a great place. A lot of great hospitality here. And, and we love that you came with us on the show today. Love hearing about Berkeley Prep and all the great swimmers and things you guys are doing. Again, more power from Berkeley Prep. So super right. excited for yeah, that. And, and good luck this week. Yep. I know your you district's six days away. Yep, six days, same as yours. Yeah, yeah. Coming we're up quick. And and I know by next week we'll know who's swimming what at state, so I'm looking forward to yeah. the next show that we have. Yeah, well, that makes right. a lot that makes things much <laughs> easier when it comes to And again, we're trying to bring everything with the uh, the uh, swim tracker below. Please send all your district results or any kind of information to us at info at floridaswimnetwork.com. We love it. We love bringing it to you. We're super excited about it. We know that um, it is our last time here. We'll look forward to the next time we're with you guys. So, from all of us here at Florida Swim Network, we'll see you next time on deck.